Hi guys, today we're going to look at how we can move a character around a scene using the character controller component. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to click like and subscribe, and if you'd like to support our work and get access to the source code, you can find us on Patreon. Right, we'll start with this scene that has a character we can move and rotate. We created this scene in the earlier videos of our 3D platformer series, so take a look if you want to know how it was done. Previously, we've covered the basic movement, but so far we haven't taken into account any obstacles our character may face. Let's add something to collide with by clicking the plus button on the hierarchy and selecting 3D object, cube. We'll change the position of the cube to 3 on the z-axis. We'll set the rotation to 45 on the y-axis. And we'll set the scale to 5 on the y-axis and 8 on the z-axis. Let's press play to see what happens. Our character passes straight through the wall. This is expected as we haven't told Unity to include the character in its physics calculations. One way we could do this is by adding a rigid body component to the character as we did in our collisions video. The other option is to add a character controller component. As you might have guessed from the name, this is a component designed specifically for controlling characters. Let's stop the game to add this to our character. To do this, we'll select the character in the hierarchy. Then we'll click Add Component and search for the Character Controller component. You can see this has now added what looks like a capsule collider to our character. This will be used to detect collisions, so we need to make it fit the shape of our character as best we can. To do this, we'll change the centre of our Character Controller to 0.6 on the Y axis, and we'll change the height to 1. Now we need to change our script to make use of the character controller when moving. Let's double click our player movement script to open it in Visual Studio. Let's recap what's happening in this script. We're getting the amount of input on the horizontal axis and vertical axis. By default, in Unity these are mapped to the arrow keys, the WASD keys and the gamepad left thumbstick. We then take this input and use it to create a movement direction vector with the horizontal input used for the x-axis and the vertical input used for the z-axis. We combine this vector with our speed to determine the magnitude of movement. We then normalise to ensure the direction vector has a magnitude of 1. Then we move our character in this direction at the specified speed using the transform translate method. This next section handles the rotation of the character. First we check if we are moving. If we are, we create a rotation looking in the direction of movement. Then we rotate towards this at the specified rotation speed. If any of this seems confusing then please look at our earlier videos in our 3D platformer series where this is covered in more detail. Ok, let's look at how to change this script to make use of the character controller component. The first thing we need to do is get a reference to the component. We'll add a new private field for the character controller. and we'll get this in the start method. Now we can remove the line that moves the character. And we can replace it with a call to the simple move method of the character controller. We'll pass in the amount of movement we want, which is the movement direction multiplied by the desired magnitude. Note that we don't need to multiply by time.delta time as adjusting for frame rate is built into the simple move method. Let's save this script and switch back to Unity. We'll press play to try it out. Now our character collides with the wall and slides along. That's covered the collisions, but there are a couple of other features of the character controller worth looking at. If we select our character in the hierarchy, we can see we have a slope limit and a step offset. These control how steep a slope the character can go up and how high a step up it can do. So at the moment, it can go up a slope of 45 degrees and make a step up of 0.3. Let's stop the game and add a slope and some steps. 
We'll click on the plus button on the hierarchy and select 3D object, cube. We'll set the position to 2 on the x-axis, 0.5 on the y-axis, and 2 on the z-axis. We'll set the rotation to 50 on the x-axis, and minus 45 on the y-axis. Then we'll set the scale to 5 on the y-axis to complete our slope. Next we'll add some steps. We'll create another cube. We'll reset the transform. Then we'll set the position to be minus 1.7 on the x-axis and we'll set the rotation to 45 on the y-axis. We'll then add another cube. We'll reset the transform. We'll then set the position to minus 1.05 on the x-axis and minus 0.65 on the z-axis. And we'll set the rotation to 45 on the y-axis. We'll also set the scale to 0.6 on the y-axis. Now we have some steps and a slope, let's press play to try it out. You can see that our character can go up the steps. And can go up the slope. Now let's see what happens if we change the slope and step values. If we select the character in the hierarchy and lower the slope limit to 30, the character can no longer go up the slope. If we lower the step offset to 0 0.1, then the character can no longer go up the steps. Using the character controller has given us the foundations of our character movement. In future videos, we'll look at how we can add other movements, such as jumping, so subscribe and hit the alarm bell button so you don't miss it. Ok, that covers everything for this video, hope you found it useful. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks guys!